Hello everyone, Humphrey here with Router Gods. Today is September 1st, 2014. Already, years going by fast. If you've been waiting for Cisco CML, viral, public IOU, whatever they want to call it, you've been waiting a long time and some of you are getting understandably very impatient. So just like me, I'm a little impatient. I went ahead and I downloaded Cisco's 1PK virtual machine. I'm going to show you how to do that. And I extracted out the iOS V, which is the iOS supposedly used in the upcoming C CML and actually used in the labs. So I've got it here running in Super Putty. It's actually running in VMware Workstation and then I use Super Putty to get into it. And we're going to show you how to do exactly what you see on the screen, just like I do. So eventually what you will get into is you're going to make a really awesome diagram really awesome network with 10 routers. We're gonna work up to this. And then after that, the sky's the limit. You could do 20 routers, 30 routers, whatever. And the footprint is very small. It's about 384 megs per instance, per router. So if you're running 10 routers, it's gonna be about four gigs of RAM, which is not a big deal. And your CPU is going to be less than five to 10%. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, we have a couple requirements that we have to talk about or else none of this is going to work. As far as hardware is concerned, you're going to be, want a decently fast computer, something like a Core i5, Core i7, with at least 8 gigs of RAM. Now, this shouldn't be a problem for most of you. Preferably, you should have 16 gigs of RAM or more if you're going to do anything crazier than 10 routers. And especially if you're studying for CCIE and you're using other virtual images, 16 gigs and up is kind of what you should be shooting for. A fast hard drive because you're going to be running multiple instances of iOS V. And basically anytime you're doing virtualization, you should have a fast hard drive or multiple hard drives. And preferably these days, you should have an SSD to run everything because it's going to make cloning your virtual machines that much better. As far as software is concerned, you're going to need to have 7-Zip or WinRAR. Uh, I like 7-Zip. It's free. It's easy to use. Uh, this is what we're going to use to extract the image. And you're going to actually do this multiple times, believe it or not. You're going to need VMware Workstation 10. Now, I know some of you are on Workstation 9, and it should work. But I've done most of this testing on VMware Workstation 10. And then you're going to need PuTTY or Super PuTTY to be able to telnet into your virtual machine after you have it up and running. We're gonna have three steps in getting iOS V to work inside a VMware workstation. Those three steps are, we're gonna to have to download the 1PK image, and it's about two to three gigs, depending on what, what version we're dealing with. I think the one I downloaded was about 2.5 gigs. So that's a very easy step, just download it. Step two will be extracting it out. Now this one's a little interesting because it's a, a VM inside of a VM inside of another VM, it gets very Inception-like. So this can be a little tricky, but at the end of it, you're going to get an image that's about 100 megs large. So a very significant decrease from the 2.5 gigs. And step three, configure VMware Workstation. And this is gonna require us to do a lot of cloning if you want to have multiple uh, routers. We're gonna to have to set up name pipes for our serial ports to for us to use PuTTY to PuTTY into. And we're also gonna need to set up network adapters and LAN segments. Not too big of a deal, but it does require some work. All right, step one, finding and downloading your 1PK image. It's gonna be very easy. You're gonna to go to google.com and in the search bar, search for 1PK download. 1PK download. You're gonna have a bunch of links on the first page, of course, like always with Google. Now, this first top link, Cisco's One Platform Kit, if it starts with www.cisco.com, don't go to it. It's going to be a trap. When you click on it, you'll be clicking for years trying to find the link to download it. What you want to do is you want to go to the link that actually starts with developer.cisco.com, this all-in-one VM, Cisco Developer Community, DevNet. Click on that link, and you'll be given a page that amazingly has the download link right there. So yes, I know it's just like Cisco's documentation. Sometimes it is hell trying to find the exact thing that you're looking for. So this page, all you need is to have a Cisco logon, the CCO logon. You don't need to buy anything. All you need to do is register for free if you don't have a Cisco logon. It, 
if you're studying for Cisco certs, you should have one anyways, and just log on and download the link. Now it is 2.5 gigs, you'll be waiting for a while. Hopefully you have some fast connection like Fios or you know some something other than Time Warner or Comcast. After you've downloaded the file and popped it into a folder, here I've put it into a folder called 1PK Download. You can see it's a 2.5 gig file and it's called all-in-one VM 121-194. That's current as of September 1st, 2014. If we right click and go to properties, you will see that this is a .ova file by clicking on details. So that's a .ova file. We're gonna to need to extract out the VMDK file and other files that VMware Workstation will understand. So it's very easy. If you have 7-zip installed, simply right click, go to 7-zip, and extract files here. You can also extract it to a folder, but here we'll just do it the easy way, extract files here. You can see that it gave me three more files. This open virtualization format package, this, that is a .ovf. If we right click and go to properties, you'll see in details .ovf. So all it changed from .ova to .ovf. This is the configuration that VMware Workstation will understand. And we also have the VMDK file, which is the virtual disk that will work inside VMware Workstation. Now we're not done extracting yet. We need to open this up inside of VMware Workstation, rip out a file and do some more extracting. So very easy to open this file up. Just go to the one that says open virtualization format package, the OVF, right click on it and select open with VMware Workstation. Click on that guy and basically it's gonna import it in. I'm gonna call this a very bad name, test. Okay, our import is finished. You can see it's called test. I'm gonna power on the machine. It's gonna boot up into Ubuntu Linux. Yeah, we have the Linux start screen. Password's gonna be Cisco123, Cisco123, and Cisco123. Accept the agreement. Don't worry, you're only gonna have to do this once. And here you can basically put whatever you want. Okay, so the whole reason that we started this virtual machine is we're gonna rip out a particular file. This is the VIOS file. So just to show you where this is, we're gonna open up terminal and we're gonna cd slash user cd share cd vm cloud i know you linux guys you sh you can do this in your sleep with uh, just one one go but uh i like going cd and ls every time and then we're going to have images so slash user slash share vm cloud data images and inside of here you're going to see the v ios blah 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 dot ova image that's that's what you want right there and if we do it ls-l, you're gonna see that this particular image, it's about 114 megs. So that's the one we wanna get, okay? So in order for us to extract this, we don't have VM tools installed just yet. We're not gonna do it. We're gonna do it a different way. We're gonna use SSH. And this is also assuming you have FileZilla or some type of FTP program installed on your Windows machine. So to get SSH, into VMware Workstation and into this virtual machine. Very easy, we're gonna go sudo, we're gonna become administrator, app get, install SSH. So basically we're telling the computer, the operating system to install SSH, and our password is Cisco123. It's gonna go out to the internet, install SSH. Okay, after SSH is installed, we wanna find out the IP address of this virtual machine. That way we can use FileZilla or any other SFTP program to get into it. And in Linux, it's gonna be IF, F is in Frank, config. And on my particular machine, you can see it's 192.168.15.128. So I'm gonna open up FileZilla. And we've got wonderful FileZilla here. And for host, we're gonna do SFTP 
colon slash slash and the IP address 192.168.15.128 username Cisco password Cisco123 and the port is going to be we'll just leave it blank there and click quick connect you're going to get a little thing saying host key is unknown that's fine this is the first time we're connecting to it and we wait a little bit and we finally connect so this is pretty cool now we are dumped into the slash home slash cisco directory we're going to go into slash user basically we're going to go to that full path that i showed you a couple minutes ago so here We'll just navigate it by hand. So I think it's slash user, then it was share, then it was VM cloud. There you go, VM cloud, data, images, and that's the file right there. 114 megs, and you're gonna just drag it out. And in fact, what you can do is you can drag it out to that same folder that you downloaded the original .ovf file. So I'm gonna drag it out to my one PK download folder. And it should be pretty quick because you're just connecting to the machine inside of your regular machine. So blazing fast, we've downloaded it. And now I'm going to go open the folder just to verify. Yep, and we've got this 111 meg uh, sized file right there. All right, you are done with this part of Virtual Machine uh, VMware Workstation. You can simply right click on this, power it down. You're never going to return to it and delete that puppy. It is gone from the face of the earth because now you've got the VIOS Advanced Enterprise image. Still got a little ways to go, but the bulk of the, of the work is done. Okay, so you've got this 111 meg image. What do you do with it? Well, we're gonna extract it again. So look at all this extracting we're doing. Just simply right click on that, go to 7-zip and extract. I'm gonna extract it to a folder this time that because we're getting a lot, of, a lot of files there, it's gonna get confusing. Go into the folder and you'll know that this will work correctly when you see those two readme files. Now, before you do anything else, save these files somewhere because this file is liquid gold, virtual gold, whatever you want to call it. It's like Bitcoin right here. Save this off drive off to a USB stick somewhere permanent because all this 10, 20 minutes of work that you've done before, you never need to do it again as long as you have this image. This is the image you are going to run inside of VMware. Now I know you're impatient. If you want to start playing with this right away, right click on that, open with VMware Workstation, Call it something nice like test via OS, whatever you want to call it. Uh, here we're just playing around. Later on when we do our 10 router topology, we're going to do things a little bit more structured, but I'm sure right now you just want to launch it. Click import. It's going to be pretty fast. If you have SSD Core i7, it's going to be like 15 seconds or so. And there it is. This is the image we're actually going to use. You can see it's 384 megs very very low impact there these are our network adapters and we're going to add need to add something we're going to need to add a virtual serial port because that's how putty and super putty are going to get in so unlike other vmware workstation virtual machines we're not going to actually manage anything from within vmware workstation we're just going to start it let it go and then putty into the vm all right so we're going to need to add an adapter so we're going to go to edit virtual machine settings see these are network adapters we're going to click on add and then go to serial port and next and it's going to say use physical serial port to host that's fine and this should be okay and we're going to finish it so leave it auto tech just basically the defaults there and we should be okay let's see now we're going to need to change one thing. It's called use named pipe. So click on that. Use named pipe. To, so this is what you're going to enter into PuTTY to kind of trick it to use a serial port. So the syntax is very particular. It's going to be slash slash dot slash pipe slash com underscore one. 
So your first router is going to be COM1, second router COM2, and you get the picture. So slash slash dot slash pipe slash COM underscore one. And we're going to copy this. Just so you have it in the clipboard, click OK and fire this sucker up. You're going to see it load and just hit enter at that screen. Now nothing too pretty is going to happen right here. It's actually very boring because the real magic is going to happen when you telnet into this. So we're going to start up putty. And remember before we, we copied something in here, we're going to paste this guy in there. Click on serial or maybe I should have clicked on serial first. Click on serial first and then paste and 9600 is fine. Click open and there is our terminal window and we're going to wait for this guy to boot up. It takes about, uh, depending on how fast your computer is, about 30 seconds to a minute for this guy to come up. Okay, on your first boot up of this virtual machine, you might be freaking out because you see all this error opening TFTP, initial configuration, all that stuff. That's fine, just let it go. Type no there. You're going to keep getting these open TFTP errors because it's trying to look for a config. And the reason for that is you've got interfaces that are bridged out to the internet by default inside of VMware Workstation. So don't worry about that. We're going to fix that later when we start doing our, our 10 router, 20 router deals. And it works just like a regular router. First thing you may want to do is no service config to stop all that annoying TFTP error and show IP interface brief. Now you'll see that you have 10 interfaces, gig 00, all the way to gig 09. Uh, one of these guys is running DHCP, so this is where that error is coming from. And if you notice, you've got gig 00 to gig 09. If we go back to our virtual machine tab and go to settings, you'll see that this correlates very, very perfectly to your network adapter. So gig 00 is network adapter, gig 01 is network adapter two, gig zero two is network adapter three. So the numbers are offset by one. So when you get to gig ethernet zero nine, that's actually network adapter 10. Now don't worry, in most of your topologies, you're never gonna get over network adapter two or three. So it's not gonna be too crazy. But yeah, for now, you could play around with your virtual machine just like normal. If you want, you could shut down that annoying Gig02 interface. That way you don't get any more error messages. And just play around. And I think that's it for part one of this video. In part two, I'm going to show you how to clone this machine so you can get 10 routers running in a crazy topology, how to set up the LAN, LAN segments, and how to set up uh, the name pipes and your super putty to get all of this to work seamlessly into your home CCNP, CCIE, home lab. Thanks for watching.